Yeah, she is a superstar in the world of music, winner of nine Grammy Awards. But this morning, Cheryl Crow is actually rocking a new cookbook. It was born out of her um, battle with breast cancer. If it makes you healthy, it can't be that bad. That's right. 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 Exactly. <laughs> uh, she's teamed up now with her personal chef, Chuck White, to share their healthy, tasty recipes in a new cookbook titled exactly that if it makes you healthy cheryl crow and chuck white uh join us now Good welcome morning. to both of you thank you uh, this would be we do this anyway because you're here and we love cookbooks and we love healthy cookbooks we but, like to eat but what's it we certainly do uh, <laughs> what is this connection to to breast cancer how did how did this um, spawn a cookbook five years ago knock on wood um five years ago i was diagnosed and um i decided instead of going the um, conventional route of taking tamoxifen that I would try to really embrace a proactive stance and using nutrition as being part of my staying, staying well. And I met with a nutritionist named Rachel Beller who actually does the forward in the book and learned so much about food and about the benefits of certain foods as far as staying well and building your immune system. And I hooked up with Chuck when I was getting ready to go on the road because I wanted to continue on with my staying um, you know, on this course. And Chuck was writing recipes in Nashville, um, and an amazing cook, but also already knew so much about different components in food, like spices and the benefits. Right. Um, I mean, yeah. food, that was, our, that was our original medicine. I mean, food, yes. herbs, spices. The interesting yeah. thing, you write in the front that this is not to, you know, tr treat or diagnose a medical condition, but there are growing numbers of people who feel it's very important once they're cancer-free or hoping to be cancer-free mm -hmm. to really uh, almost try to eat antioxidants. How do you do that in your cooking? Uh, we use a lot of colorful vegetables. There's a lot of, uh, you know, you can use a purple, say a purple cabbage versus a regular cabbage or a purple potato. Um, lots and lots of colors and trying to use vegetables when they're in a season or at their peak. Um, trying to eat, um, you know, um, poultry or meat that's antibiotic or steroid free. Um, so getting all those toxins in your body. Um, really, really helps uh, helps with your wellness. We know so much more about this than we did even, you know, when yeah. I was growing up. You yeah. have two little boys. You have two little kids. I have three little boys, and you know their their bodies are little temples. You know, mm -hmm. we're trying to feed them with the good stuff early on. It's hard though. Yeah. They like tater tots. Like you have a vegetable lasagna in there that looks delicious. If I yeah. can cover it with tater tots, my kids would eat it. <laughs> <laughs> but Wyatt loves the veggie lasagna. How do you how do you make all of this stuff good and be really dedicated to having good food for your family and your kids? I would say that um, deception is <laughs> tantamount in my house and, uh, and bribery. Yeah. We have actually one of the reasons that we did the cookbook in the first place or that I made Chuck do this because Chuck is, I mean, we went in to meet with publishers and they said, how many recipes do you have written down? He said, none. He, it's all in his head. They're all here. So I made him do it because wow, um, cool. uh, one of the first things he ever made was avocado. Um, uh, uh, chocolate mousse made with avocado and cocoa, which is just straight up cocoa, high in antioxidant, avocado, and um, a little agave. So I use that as bribery with my four-year-old because the one-year-old will eat everything, right. but the four-year-old right. suddenly right. has an opinion about what he yeah, he'll they get eat. Picky. But hiding food in foods that I know he'll love, like he eats a lot of quinoa pasta because quinoa is a mm -hmm. grain, very non-gluten, and he thinks he's eating spaghetti, which he basically is, but it's not, you know, it's high in protein and it's not you, your, your standard. Kieran got me on to quinoa the other day, actually. You were telling me all about it. But Sorry, listen, if I want to adopt, I'm, I'm the, we talk a lot about food. We certainly eat a lot of food here. Um, if I want to do this, do I have to get a personal chef, too? No. Now, let me just say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to cut him. But Chuck knows I uh, was not, never a cook. I mean, not even remotely interested in it. I would eat tuna salad every single day. But you can play it. He did put a nice tuna salad <laughs> recipe in here. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you, you made a cookbook that the even people. With, yeah, even, even some I simple, can some use. simple things in there. There's a few more intricate things. Um, there's a couple different cuisines as well. Um, some vegan, vegetarian. Yeah, I had to um, find, you guys had some marinade for your chicken that looked complicated, that looked like it was a fancy word. I was trying to figure that one out. Uh, I'm not sure. There's one with basil and apple in there. That's basil and apple. <laughs> 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 Even for us, those aren't basil. <laughs> <words. laughs> oh, no, here it is. Here it is. Sherry vinegar gastrique. Is oh, that a recipe? That's actually just a little sauce that goes on. It's really it's basically just sugar and vinegar. Gastrique so I'm doing is this a one. really two, two nice name for sauce. Yeah. Gastrique, gastrique. is gastrique. sauce. Gastrique. I love what it. Is it? Well, the other thing too is it is it is it more expensive to eat healthy? I mean, bottom line for people who can get processed foods at their local drugstore. As well, I would to say it, it might be more expensive in the long run for healthcare. So if you, uh -huh. you know, yeah. if you spend that extra couple dollars a day eating healthy, mm -hmm. you won't pay for it in the long well, run. Well, it's a wellness investment, and exactly. that's really clear when you make right. the investment on the front end for wellness. Mm -hmm. That's something that's going to pay dividends on, you know, on the back end, no matter what your 
no matter what your 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 physical mm -hmm. whether it's a breast cancer diagnosis or it's or obesity or mm -hmm. diabetes it's just trying to get a handle on and it. how are you by the way I know that you, this was in 2006 you yeah, underwent I'm treatment five years I'm always knocking on whatever vinyl <laughs> um, I'm five years out, so that means I'm basically, I mean, I'm done. Um, my cancer was, was detected really, really early, so I'm always preaching about how until we have a cure, um, early detection and prevention is the best hope that we have. But, you know, a lot of, the, um, a lot of what I learned through nutrition is um, that what we do um, with regard to our bodies has a very distinct correlation to our wellness. And a lot of what's in the book, it's a great handbook, is stuff that we already do. Right. Um, and it's just knowing, um, it's having the power of knowledge uh, to continue to, to incorporate some of the things that we already do on a daily basis. Well, thanks to both yeah. of you for being here. Cheryl Crow and Chuck White, co-authors of If It Makes You Healthy. <laughs> thanks. Congratulations. You got 100 recipes right out of your head and threw them in here. Good for you. <laughs> Talk about pressure.